Good evening, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's good to see you. My name is Fanny Reinders. Welcome. It is a Tuesday night. Time for some live coding goodness. Today we're going to be looking back um, yet again, working on my uh, little application, WinForms application. And uh, we're going to... Oh, sorry. Dude, it's Monday. Where am I? <laughs> Cut. Let's start over. Gerald just reminded me it is Monday, but you know what? It's Tuesday somewhere. I'm talking to the folks in Australia. Hopefully it's, it's a Tuesday there, but in any case, happy Monday folks. Uh, it's, uh, yes, actually it is still Monday. Can you believe it? it's cyber Monday? It's still on. Um, anyway. My name is Fanny Reinders, welcome, and thank you so much guys for correcting me there. Gerald Vosleis, welcome to the chat. Code Stencil, like always, welcome, 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 good to see you guys. Um, yeah, like I was saying, uh, we're going to be digging into the code again, it's hectic legacy code. Um, and today, I've, I've, I've done some refactoring um, today, offline. I'm going to be showing what I've done. But this whole authentication thing that we've been doing so far, it's working brilliantly. Um, and uh, furthermore, that um, it, it's actually to a point that I'm actually urging myself to wire up the CI/CD. And the choice is, do I do it with uh, Azure DevOps or do I do it with uh, GitHub Actions? So think about it maybe we can come to a conclusion together. Um, so we'll be spending some time today, maybe refactoring this code a bit, making it a bit more, um, more modular, you know, um, and maybe make, making it a bit more, um, more user friendly. Games Mike, thank you so much. Hello. Um, hello there, guys. If you don't know, here on the right hand side, um, I don't think there's a uh, there was a bit of a delay to, um, when we started off, but I think it's working now. If you have any any questions or comments or whatever, just be nice, but just ask it, uh, and I'll stop and we'll um, we will we will tackle it together. So, games, thank you so much for um, for waving. Uh, let me see what happens. Uh, what happened in the past? Um, uh, CM Bruno, thank you so much for the follow. It's about a few days ago. Nico Tube, uh, three hours ago. So much. Thank you so much. Uh, so much. So much. So much. So much. So much. Just capturing it out of there. Thank you so much for the follow. And of course, Gerald just shared uh, ten bits. Gerald, like always, you're the bomb. You're the bomb, man. You're the bomb. Uh, if you've just joined us, you are just in time because. Stuff is going to get real. everyone doing uh, I think my uh, what's happening here something is up with the music here it's just one second I've been having so much fun That should do the trick. The music is off now. I think. I was having so much fun um, doing a little dance for you guys. But in any case, let me see if I can. Why did it? Why did it go away? I just want to quickly see what's happening. One second. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so now, uh, of course, pretzel is now. I'm using pretzel, by the way, for, for, for the background music. And I think... Uh, 
it's not working anymore for some reason. Why is my music off? It's a bit of a bit of a sad thing. It's defaulting. Why is this thing defaulting to? Okay, so that's kind of that's the best I will get for uh, for now. At least there's some sub tunes. Just give me a heads up in the chat if the if the music is not so loud because I can't really hear myself, um, but I can hear the music. And um, this should be fine. I don't know why it does not want to play my normal way. But any case, guys, welcome to the uh, welcome to the show. Um, like I said, today we're going to be focusing on refactoring old code again. You know, we've been for the past couple of five or six episodes, we've been doing a lot of um, refactoring on um, on all C sharp code but it's starting to get to a point where it's kind of shippable I would say it's open source um, go check it out I'm posting the link now um, let's actually copy it github go on funny renders and you wanted to be able to follow along this is the master branch so you want to be able to follow along there if you want to just go and get clone that uh, that repo if you want um okay code stencil i will uh, i will wait here i will be around and uh go do your thing go do your thing man go do your thing okay so in any case where was i everyone good i think let's uh let's actually skip the song because it's kind of random um, let's just maybe see what's happening. That sounds much better. All right, so let's uh, switch over to the screen. Boom. Okay, so what I have here is not a, not the really one I wanted to show. Um, okay, going back. So what we have here. So yet again, starting with a demo. For the folks that just joined us. What you're seeing now was an old VB.net application 10 plus years ago, probably about 15-ish years ago. It's still working, but the problem was it's compiled. I did not have, did not have the source code, so I, uh, I took it on myself to find the, the EXE somewhere. It's out of date. Um, I'll actually show you. And then, I wonder if it will be here though. There's the EXE, and um, uh, that's now okay. That's different because it's been I don't have all the other stats. But in any case, um, so to make changes, we had to get the source code right. And how do you get the source code? You decompile it, and uh, using JetBrains is um, I always forget that uh, JetBrains tool. I think I have it here somewhere. In any case, it's uh, people on the chat will remind you what it was called. Um, using that, you can decompile it from IL. Now, what is IL? It's intermediate language. So for .NET, uh, it was .NET 2 uh, at that point. It's get .NET uh, code gets compiled into something called intermediate language. So that's something that the .NET runtime can understand and execute code. So what the decompiler does is take IL and kind of reverse engineers it back into um, the language of your choice, any .NET language. So it was VB.NET, which is okay, but it's not my favorite anymore. So I went from VB.NET, IL, and I went back to C Sharp again. And a lot of these things that we see is uh, not exactly the code that I've written myself. It's kind of reverse engineered code uh, in a sense. Um, but it's but it's fairly close, and I think 90% of the time I will just blame the IL 
a reverse engineer process because it's crappy code. Um, don't judge my code. Never judge anyone's code. But anyway, it's 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 fun to look at, and it's uh, also fun to sort of what the hell did I do here? And let's jump in and make it better. There's obviously a, a degree on how far you can go because, of course, you can refactor anything from zero to to a thousand. But also, we have to look at the at the value. What do you, what are you actually trying to achieve? This code that we're doing now, it's a WinForms application. For the first phase, I will most probably do a kind of a roadmap sometimes when I have, when I have a chance, maybe on a Tuesday. Um, so the first phase is to get everything as it, well, phase zero was to get the source code back, which we've done, check. First, the first phase that we're busy with now um, is to get, also to kind of modernize the stack a bit, but just enough so that we can sort of add more fe features to it and have it automatically deploy, etc. So one of which is uh, putting Azure uh, Active Directory behind it for user management. So we don't want to store passwords. The current version has it, its own password manager. We want to actually plug in Azure AD. It's almost done. The second one is move the database currently SQL up into the cloud uh, and still leave the rest as is, right? And as we move forward, we can make choices that make sense, right? So I think the idea is to move it towards a completely web-based um, system, but it might change. It might change that we um, go to web-based, but still keep a kind of a shell container to make it native or something. Um, or by that time, Blazor Native will be around and we'll, we'll keep it, have it like a Blazor Native UI. We don't know yet at, at, at this point. And I think um, what I'm trying to say is that we should refactor towards a point that we can always say check and keep it that way forever, whatever that means. That's a tip. Okay, so what do we have here? I'm just, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna run it. Did you notice all it automatically signed me in there? Look on the top right. It already signed me in as Joe. So I'm just going to sign out. I want to get rid of this um, this login page because the initial idea was that uh, you are presented with um, when you open up this application, you get all these icons like this is the, all these companies that you can connect to. And because this was a local WinForms application that works on a local database or on your local network, for instance, each of these icons represents a connection to a database. And we can keep it that way um, still, but that means then you need to have the icon locally stored on your machine for it to work. I was thinking of, you know, when a guy logs in for the first time, you get its context already. Context, not contacts. Context. That means you have uh, go back here quickly. Go V next. I think it is what to put cloud. Oh, that's the old one or the old new one. Um, boom. So it auto locks in because it uses a cache currently for the um, Azure AD and it stores the cache in this, um, if you go to the output file, into this bin file. So if you go to the bin directory, mm, type, uh, dun, 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 dun. here, this one, the jobcard.dll.msl.cache.bin3 file. Um, Oh, by the way, folks, folks, if I'm going too fast because I have a tendency to blah, 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 and override, I need to learn to relax a bit. So that was one of the, one of the feedback I, I received a while ago. Ping me if I need to relax a bit. So just say, slow down, horse, slow down. So in any case, I think the music is partly to, 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 to blame for this, but in any case, so you delete this file. That's the local cache. And uh, 
if you run it again, it won't find any uh, any uh, token locally, so it will attempt to um, ask Azure to to log in again. Um, and here we are. We have a, a user, Joe Soap. Just log in and sign in, and there we go. That's the experience we want. No pop-ups, no nothing. It's part of the application. Um, and I was playing around with the idea so that we can maybe um, replace these buttons also as web buttons because currently it's just it's just normal buttons, right? Will this actually work? Why is it so slow now? It's not supposed to be slow. hanging oh my soul let's see why it's hanging okay my information that will break why is this thing actually breaking something else is going wrong here i think i've changed too much it's maybe something we can fix okay so what i what have i done i've added a uh, kind of a security fold and all the security things are in there um, and uh, I've introduced something called the authentication flow interface. All right. So what we have here is uh, simple things. We've got a sign in and sign out uh, methods, as well as a uh, string, which is your authorization header. The implementation thereof uh, will be, um, in this case, is Azure AD authentication flow. And uh, when you call authorization header, it will just ask the authorization or authentication result um, that it will compute uh, to create a authorization header for you. That's like kind of built into the Microsoft identity client package that we have. Um, and then as a, as a dependency, we have a dependency on the Azure login custom web UI, which is our uh, implementation of iCustom Web UI. That's the, the way we can use our own little form to delegate um, user access. So in this case, we just use our own form to open up a web view. I think it's, yeah, it's still web view um, that opens up the Azure AD login page instead of the built-in package one that pops up your browser. Um, this is the dependency. Why? Because we have, I know there's some uh, hard coding stuff in here, but, but, but it's fine. Bear with me. So let's see. Um, we use this uh, public client application builder uh, and we configure it. And then what it will do the, the initial time, it will try and find it will get to all the accounts that it has locally. I already have Joe Soap, so it will grab that one. And it will try to sort of get the token silently. And if that doesn't work, it will throw an exception. So in this case, it will throw an MSL UI required exception. So they, there needs to be some kind of intervention needed. So then yet again, we, we say, okay, great. Now we require a token interactively uh, using this custom web UI that we pass in initially and um, both cases we are setting the authentication result so you need to call sign in async before you can do anything else so actually what we can do is we should be able to because there's a string that doesn't really matter before you can use this you need to be calling this so that's how it logs in, how you log in Let me see. Okay, so we have. Also, what I've done is I have moved. I think this login form we will probably move out because I like it to be generic. This token cache helper is a kind of a, a file that sort of keeps. Well, it's a class that that uh, handles our um, our cache locally. Uh, this is actually a piece of code I've. Uh, borrowed from the internet somewhere. Um, okay. 
Also, I've cleaned up a bunch of. Um, yeah, this is the main form, and its code. So I've, I've split it up into a designer because I note that when you reverse engineer it using that uh, JetBrains uh, tool, normally when you have a um, a form like this one we've created earlier, the Azure Login Form, it has a Azure Login Form Designer CS. Both of these are classes, but the one is a partial class of the other one. When you reverse engineer, it just sticks everything into one class, which is a bit messy, you know? Um, so in this case, we have in this normal one, we should have only the clean code or the, or the functions. I'm going to remove a bunch of things. We should have only the, the functions that we, that we use. And here's a bunch of logic in here that I'm not necessarily proud of, but it's in there, and we can uh, we can change them. Um, and it's kind of hard to model this in a way that you model MVVM applications, but I'm gonna kind of try my best. Um, so I was thinking about this flow, about this whole thing. Do you guys think it is? It is a necessity or requirement, you know, when you run it, to ask for. Let me just see what happens now. Um, to ask for your company to log in as V1, or should we just skip this entirely and just ask for the login page? Just be, re just be. Oh just be uh, presented with that um, that login page that we see there earlier. The nice thing about this is that it's multi-tenant by design. So it's still files. Um, maybe we should keep it. Because in here can be the tenant ID and that's it. Um, or should there be? Because it, that's just a, uh, um, a shortcut, right, of the of the actual connection string to a database. Um, we will let's just let, let's just quickly think about this now for one second. Let's zen out and think about it. First phase, we want to keep as is, but modernize security and move the database to the cloud. By design, it's a multi-tenant database or multi-tenant system that has a database for each company. I want to change that. I want to change that in, 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 in future versions that you don't have physical databases for each organization. That doesn't make sense. Uh, I want to change it to one Cosmos DB or have a Cosmos DB per uh, one Cosmos DB account and have a Cosmos DB um, for each client or for each organization, I think. Because if we if we take this out, let's do this quickly again. So let's just move that file. So this is the experience you will get. When you run it, immediately you will be prompted with a login page. Given your login page, the user can still decide to log into, you know, Joe Soap at othercompany.com, whatever, directly, instead of clicking that icon. But is it intuitive enough, you know? Um, So we have that, and then he logs into the, the job code in this case. And the way this works is that the moment he logs in, he or she logs in, there's the sign in. You call the uh, authentication flow sign in, you know, and then we could refactor this. So now it's using the graph service client to get the, the user information, the user DTO, the user group DTO, to get its groups and to get its organization. And then once all three of those tasks are completed because it's executed uh, simultaneously, 
uh, we will grab the first organization that is assigned to that entity. This is where it becomes interesting. Because how will this work? If I am if we link if we link Joe Sub for instance. Let's see, I'm I'm hooked to many organizations. One of those will work though. Um yeah. Let's uh, delete this file again. So if I log in as me, I think that will work for that way. Okay, now it's asking me to do this whole um, two-factor authentication thing that I've set up earlier. Let's just go set up. using my phone quickly to authenticator oh not that just not docker um add account this is a personal account I think work for school maybe it can be better scan it Oop. that should be fine yeah now I'm locked to the job court company Okay, next. And let's check in the activation status. I wish you can actually... Next. Okay, now it's going to send me a notification. I approve. Okay, so this is the first time the user needs to do this. And I, I, I'm not sure how this works with two-factor authentications because this is then also a nice thing about using Azure AD. It comes out of the box. You don't have to think about it. Um, instead of implementing it your own, which is a nice thing, you know, just use something that is there ready. Uh, verification successful. Let's make sure you can reach your mobile device now. What is happening now? I have no idea. Finished. Okay, so what's the problem now? Okay, so I think let's just stop it there. I might be linked to more than one organization. No, not actually. This thing is throwing error. Ooh, not that file. The wrong one. Oh, there we go. So now it's asking me, you know, um, I can use this one to sign in. It's not asking me for anything. I wonder why this is not working there. Some exception most most probably. Okay, let's remove the file completely again. Let's maybe run it. And there we go. Uh, so this organizations, there's already just, there's just one organization, right? So that's a job court company. But if you're going to be Joe Soap, you're going to be duplicating your tenant or your user in your other tenants. Laser 696969. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the show. How are you doing? Thank you for the chat. I think there's a little capogen for you and for your emote. Thank you so much. Welcome, how are you doing? Um, so the, the point is that we have 
one user per so one user will always have one tenant it won't be a many to many in this case because if i create a different tenant this whole sign in dance dance whatever you want to call it this is all called organization so it's multi-tenant there so let's quickly do that I want to actually see if we can do that. So open up my favorite browser. We go to portal.azure.com. And eventually we will be presented with this. All right, so. Laser says, I too want to write bad code today and want to come back one year later and ask himself, OMG, did I write this? <laughs> It happens to the best of us, I must say. It happens to the best of us. But you know what? Can I let you into a little secret? There is no such thing as too bad of a code. You know, I always tell myself, way back when, it was the best code ever. And that's what matters. And if you can look 10 years or 12 years or 15 years down the line, back on the code, if you can find it, in my case, um, and you see improvements, you can tap yourself on the back because you have grown as a developer. You have grown as a developer that you can see it in yourself, you know, and no one else is as best critic as yourself, I would say. Laser, no, I do not work for Microsoft, unfortunately, but our friend Gerald Fuschleis is in the house. He is working for... Uh, Oh my soul, do we have number 100? I think laser 696969. That person is our number one follower. Let's give him or her a Capuchin Storm and change the music to something more, I think something more um, bitey, I would say. You think I, you thought I work for Microsoft because of my cap. Now, I just like this cap. Uh, hold on. I've got this, uh, this one as well. Um, it's a, it's our SDN cast. It's our Dutch webcast uh, cap. If you go to sdncast.nl, you can follow along. We've got, every Thursday night, we've got a podcast. And uh, then we wear that cap. Only have two for now, but yeah, it's a, it's a cool cap. I made it myself by outsourcing someone to spray it for me. That's how I roll. Uh, later note, I don't work as a freelancer. Yet, I would say. At the moment, no. Are you a freelancer? Um, I wish I was your 69th follower. Okay, that, uh, yeah, because of your number. Interesting. So what I want to do now is actually create a new tenant. So how do we do this? Let's just see. Um, uh, active directory tenant. This one. Create. Now, let's call this um, the other awesome topco. For instance, you have the awesome one and the other awesome job code. So Laser, uh, if you want to know about, he says uh, he's interesting in a, in a freelancer or remote jobs, he's currently um, learning to code and currently applying for jobs. Um, we have a, a community with a bunch of clever people that can help you out to get on board very quickly. So if you want, um, ping me on Twitter. I can um, hook you up, uh, I can help you to get started with the right uh, channels, if you will. Um, by all means, stop me in the show, I will try my best to uh, answer your questions. I do offer some some basic uh, uh, workshops in, in, in some of my streams, I will, I will do like um, C-Sharp 101 or something like that. If you want to have more than that, we can 
we can maybe see if we can uh, hook you up onto uh, point you into the, into the right directions where there are um, videos or, or courses or come to our meetups you know if you go to dutch.net uh, one of our meetups that we have in the Netherlands I don't know where you're from though but we have a lot of meetups and of course from your country there are, is probably also a bunch of meetups go to these meetups you can learn a lot of things there other job co I'm just gonna call it other job co it's my pleasure laser my pleasure you are from South Asia now what time is it there now currently in the Netherlands I'm from the Netherlands okay so the other job code so what I'm gonna be doing good old Joe soap will be recreated in that so um, I have in, in this case there's no I don't think there's a use case for having Joe soap share tenants that's just too complicated I think it's of course it's possible but in our case it's uh, it's a bit too complicated it's uh, 10 past 10 uh, 10 past 1 but your stream is fun stopping me from sleep and I suppose it's Tuesday right laser is a Tuesday it's Tuesday by you right so happy Tuesday I'm not wrong you see Give me one second, I just want to see what's happening. Talking from the future. One second. such a weird weird sounds any case so there's my directory boom so now when this thing loads up so which program language do I use so I use uh, C sharp um, currently um, it's awesome and it's built on .NET so if you don't know .NET go Google and uh, you will find lots of things on .NET Core which is cross-platform um, it's awesome stuff let's go to users and uh, let's quickly add a new user called oh, you can actually add him as a guest that's interesting so let's do that so let's add in this case we have so let's add um, John Doe John Doe and say this is John um, John John Doe like that I would say um, let me create my password and I just want to call the same password as the other one just to sort of um, groups well roles user I can't really really do anything here okay blah 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 let's keep it as is and just for um, for interest sake I'm gonna add a guest user call it um, Joe soap uh, and it was I think Joe dot soap at uh, the jobco dot on microsoft.com I think it was and Joe let's just call him Joe here and then blah 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 it's most probably going to email me there which I don't really okay yet again it's going to assign me groups interesting use this location that's interesting you can, you can okay now I'm inviting Joe Soap from the other tenant to work here which is totally possible let's just see how it goes 
laser. I am a backend developer, more like an architect currently. Um, but I do like a bunch of code. I don't know, backend, frontend doesn't really matter for me. But I like backend. Backend is awesome. But I also tend to focus more on the global solution uh, per se, not just the the one piece of application normally. And that's uh, kind of my playing area. I could, I could also do front end here. So it picks up the job card company. And I think, let's just see if I have an invite. One second. And how do I know? Does it actually come with the email address? Really? Um, oh, that's not where we want to go. Let's go to outlook.com. How many projects should I have in my portfolio to get my first job as a web developer? I think the right answer there is uh, laser. It depends. Maybe like two, maybe three. It would be nice. Uh, but there is no fixed number. Uh, there is no fixed number, I would say. So let's try this. Joe Soap at the job co job co dot on Microsoft dot com. What's happening with this uh, music? That won't work. So, I have no idea how to get that invite now. So, I've, I've invited Joe Soap. This is the username. Resend invitation. Um, there's the invitation URL. Let's just go there. Now to log in again. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, so the other awesome job code, I accept. So this one doesn't have two-factor authentication. Okay, so Joe, apps. Also, bear bear in mind, uh, this tenant does not have. This tenant does not have that application though. I have to re-add this application. It becomes a bit becomes a bit tedious, I would say, to do this this way. What is my biggest goal in life? Um, to make the world a better place by putting smiles on developers' faces. I would say, at this moment, hundred followers. Whoa, that's awesome. Let's make it 150. Um, guess I'm, I'm, I'm very interested to see what will happen now. Probably have to go there and. Uh, okay, this is now cool. So it's just, this is one organization that picks up. Okay, great. Sign out. On sign out, should actually delete that file. I think. What is called sign out. Just uh, skip this um, song. You're really giving me a smile on my face because of your stream. Oh, thank you so much. That means a lot. So. Let's log in as the job code. Okay, now I should expect more than one. 
organization, but there's only one. Okay. Does that mean... So I need a tenant. So I need a tenant obviously for this application and separate. And separate uh, tenants for each organization. Uh, hi, um, Tram Stars. How are you doing? Thank you so much for the comment. You ask, uh, how did you make that UI? Uh, you mean this little UI? Well, it is old code, but it's still awesome. Uh, I made it in WinForms, and uh, the controls you see here, it will uh, it will break now. Um, but the controls you see here is all uh, my own control that I've written way back when. Just wanna kill this breakpoint. And, um, so all these little controls here it almost, looks almost like Vista all right it is in github so you can go and grab it there it's on uh, I've just posted it um, up here somewhere uh, let me just see what's happening with this music sometimes this music I just uh, I'm gonna quickly skip this chill uh, let's go to ambient. Is that fine? No, it's not fine. Let's go for some. That's that's much better. So we want to kill, I think, that one. And there we go. So you want to go go to the current, and then down to the. A Raytech soft button. Still need to compile it though, so you can grab the source code there. Well, I only know basic of Java, so I don't actually know that. Um, Java's cool, but uh, I'm doing C sharp currently, and you know what? They're very similar. So if you if you know Java only a bit, you can follow along. I would say. Um, okay, so I'm losing my train of thought all the time here. Going back to where I started. So I've got this uh, sign in. And I inject all these things. I'm not using this validate uh, JWE token. I'm gonna remove it actually. It's not needed. Um, Tramstars ask, what is the use for your program? So the program I'm currently have is a job card program that's uh, issuing job cards. So imagine you're a plumber or a uh, builder or something, and you have a client. Um, this program helps you to record a customer's details and also record a job card uh, of all the problems and all the stuff, all the tasks that needs to be done to, to fulfill that job. It can be anything, it can be um, broken uh, geezer or something. The point is that you keep track of all these things and at the end of the day it will, it will just keep them from new in progress or, 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 or completed. Um, and also it's a kind of a CRM as well, so you can quickly get to your customers. Um, this was an application that I've built for my folks long ago. They're still using it till this date. Actually harming me for more issue, uh, for more features. That's why I don't really want to make too much changes because it's kind of stopping the, the, sh the, the show to go on. Um, but in any case, they're using this and they're using this for two companies. So that's also why I'm thinking of creating it multi-tenant. So I think for now, let's let's keep everything as is. Um, I actually want to refactor a bit of things here. So we've got this form connection that we pass in. Let's 
is thinking about something. So this uh, job card or this uh, icon that you see here. This will include the, the title. It's just a normal text file, right? That's also one of the reasons why I want to move off this model is uh, each of those icons that you see on screen was um, is a file that looks like this, the JCC file. It contains a title and also the, 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 the server name. So currently it's like pointing to localhost, local DB, and a database name. If we're gonna be using SQL for this, we either can switch on that we can do. We can switch on identity, um, what do you call it? Um, uh, application identity or, or system identity in Azure to make this work. Because we don't have a password that we're gonna saving in the in the file. But let's let's get to that problem when we get there. Um, all right, so open organization, that's what you click to open. Um, and this is it uses to get a global connection. Let's just see uh, the, the connection file. So read from file. That calls that. Oh my soul, how do I say this? Uh, Lizip. Wait, I'm, I'm going to type this out because I cannot really using phonetics or something. Let's see. Uh, L Y Z I P Y Z I think Y L Lizzie Bizzle. Hope I said correct. Lizzie, yeah, Lizzie Bizzle. Thank you so much for the follow. You are follower number one hundred one. That's great stuff. Thank you. That's uh, that's awesome. Welcome. Don't go anywhere. Um, so this is basically parsing the the file, and it feels like this should not be in there. Um, but yet again, a part of me is like, do I bother? Because you know, I want to get off these files. Let's just keep it open for now. Um, right, so when we sign in, where this is coming from, it's from the main. Uh, not from there, sorry. Oops. Go there. It's coming from the main this one all right so when the main form loads up I call sign in automatically that will give you that sign in form it will come in here and this will do the whole of dance so this will call the sign in uh, page and when that's done You know what we can actually do is because it will throw a exception when it's not I'm trying to think. So Let's call this um, a user profile task. Rename that um, user group task like that. An organization task. Okay. When all those tasks are done. 
we created a result, which is the first organization. And we map it. We could use auto map of this. So let's do that. So we, we, we now want to map something to our domain object, which is organizational entity. So all these things are sitting in the core of our application. Um, so what we have is maybe we should create a infrastructure project, maybe later. Maybe infrastructure folder. Okay, maybe make infrastructure folder. I think that's much better. Um, and in here we will call um, we'll create a new class and we'll create um, All our maps. Maps are, we want to map the following um, organization. Organization maps. I think first of all, we need some, uh, we need to auto map here. Maybe I shouldn't install it on this one. Maybe I just create a new one. And let's do it. Okay, so let's create a dot uh, standard library. We call it job card dot infrastructure. Right. And then we'll add a uh, folder in here called maps, mappings. Uh, let's move that one over to mappings up there. Let's call this mapping. Okay, so this should also... Alright. Dot mappings. So let's add... Um, I probably should have ReSharp and another one as well. But uh, not ReSharp, I mean uh, AutoMapper. Let's add AutoMapper. Install. That will install AutoMapper to our infrastructure project. Okay. And then uh, what we need is public class. Uh, how does AutoMapper work again? AutoMapper.NET Core, let's see. Hello friends, if you just joined us, we are busy refactoring code and now we're implementing AutoMapper. I also need this one. Mapping profiles, okay, I'm gonna make a profile. Let's call this profiles. Constructor, 
and then we want to say um we want to go okay control dot really to go from from this um, what is it this is a organization which is oh my soul it's an organization so it's a I need MS there as well so we will need to install bunch of um, the Microsoft Graph there as well. Let me just see where it is. Microsoft Graph Identity Client. This is now correct. So many things here. Okay, so let's see. This is that task when all requests get async. This is from the Microsoft Graph package. It should be fine. So I go down and I go install this to the Microsoft Graph. This should be fine. What's it? Graph library and core functionality used by Graph client libraries. This is now this one or this one. Let's just install that one, that's fine. A bunch of things. YOLO. Okay, so now we go to, I think it's Microsoft.graph.organization. That's actually living within Microsoft Graph, which is fine. Yeah. Do we, we want to map that to mm, job card dot infrastructure no. So this we want to map to add a reference. We want to map that to the core. Am I saying correctly? Core, oops, dot organization entity. Okay, so that's that profile. Let's uh, maybe copy this. And it maps back again as well, if we need to. Um, all right, so then we have a user profile and user group. And I think both of them will be application user. So we'll create a application user map. Application user mapping or profile. Permanently close as a profile. Auto mapper there, do a constructor. We paste this one in. Now this is interesting. So we are going to create a map, but we're going to customize this map a bit. Uh, let's maybe let's maybe take baby steps. So how do we use this now? we can install here 
um, manage auto mapper auto mapper dependency injection this one okay this should be fine yes okay so install and on startup we just need to remember to add Automapper. That's what they say. Add Automapper. Type of startup. Maybe that will work. Boom. Yeah. Add Automapper. There we go. Great, so that's going to add auto mapper. And to use it, I can just inject iMapper. So we're going to try this out. We have iMapper, we get from auto mapper, and then that's called mapper. All right. We control dot a map in there. And then when we go down, I think here. could say so auto mapper what's what's good about auto mapper is it uses the names and it maps it automatically so we don't have to do anything here so we can get rid of that and we can go mapper dot map and then the, the, the destination so we want to go to organization entity <clears throat> and the source which is the first organization result Trick. So now, so core is not supposed to reference. Wait, we're doing something wrong here. Yes. So the core project is not supposed to reference anything. To reference infrastructure here. I think that should be fine. So when it starts up, it will scan all the libraries. Just put a breakpoint there to see what happens. Okay, so that and then will that work? It breaks. <clears throat> Let's put a catch. Supported the mapping types, organizational, organizational entities does not exist. So for some reason it's not pulling in. Aha, uh -huh. okay. So here, we need to tell it that it needs to get it from, uh, from all the assemblies. Mm. 
I need to start for something there. So <clears throat> so let's go auto mapper type of what's this now? What is this? Aha. Uh -huh. Profile assembly marker types. What does that mean? Is there auto mapper documentation on this? There we go. Auto mapper. Boom. What did I say here? Where is the GitHub business getting started guide? Okay, come on. Docs. We want to get started. That's what we want to do. Come, come, come. Docs. Okay, examples. Okay, that's uh, a bit ridiculous. There's the maps. Assert configuration is valid. Create map. Okay. Um, how do I do this again? I am a bit lost. Do we need to go both ways? I don't think so. I see, so it calls initialize. Why is this not working for me? This is so overcomplicated. Um, I wish we could have just gone back to this example because this is after storing blah blah. blah. Let's do the startup. Let's do it in startup class. So. Um, okay, so what we can do is let's just see add auto mapper. Assemblies. Profile assembly marker types. Now what's that? Profile assembly marker type. I have no idea what that is.
So if we say class one, which is the marker, pull that. It should pop in something, right? Hey, that worked. <laughs> See, that worked. So we need kind of a marker. So how are we going to do this? Um, what's a cool way of doing this? marker or mappings actually make it interface it's called eye mapping or something just to take the edge off it's just a marker mapping we could say public abstract class class come now uh, mapping profile for instance okay and then inherit this from profile Doing something wrong or right? Let's see what happens. Okay, that's cool. <coughs> Mapping profile. And yeah, the startup will just call Mapping Profile. Up that guy in there. Like so. That should do the trick, right? Boom. Okay, so that works. Alright, so we have got that cleaned up. Now the other one is this uh, application user because it takes in application a user and it takes in a group. Uh, let's just kill a few of these. Uh, this one. So what we'll do is we create a map from. Because you can only map from one to one. So what you can do, what you can do is you can um, create a tuple. A type tuple maybe. Tap to be 
look again. Type tuple. C sharp. Tuple types. Is this a thing? Instead of using Automap, we could have just used a normal DTO builder. sources. Multiple sources. It's been done before. Multiple sources. Let's see what I see here. Um, create map. Map from... Okay. You cannot map the multiple many sources single destination. You should apply maps one by one. Okay, so create a map and a map there. And okay, you map it like that. Okay. So he says we should create a map for each. So we have a um, an application user and, applic and, a, and a user group map. So we have application user map. Got another one called a user group user group mapping. And that's also a mapping profile. Alright, so construct in there. Do a kind of a like that. Um add auto mapping. Oh not that. Um we want to go from, um, I think it's called a group, if I'm not mistaken. It's this directory object. Hmm. It's this one. We want to go from this one to a um, user group. user I would say user yes and that goes to application user application user there but then we want to say you know specifically for member from 
it. Yeah. Source dot source dot. Okay, that's now the source. Now the source is here. A user. Application user user group. This one I want to mapping from. Not application user. It's something else, like a value resolver or something. say map from group or something C sharp micrograph group maybe will this work there? I 
Obviously, you have to pass in an expression. Right, so here, what we do is we have the, the user, we pass the user in and the group. Because group is it's a value tuple, can you believe it? So, G, that's a U. I should resolve. Oh, sorry. This one maps now. Source destination. So what we have here, that's the user, and that's the, uh, what did I say? Source destination team member, so source destination and team member. hurt so if you're passing four in it should be the result. So if you say it's the user, it's application user, and this is just a object. It doesn't get back anything else. All these parameters are not really 
working. And maybe here actually. Source mean that there we go. to the value resolver auto mapper value resolver let's see so what we have is a custom resolver let's maybe paste it in here This takes in source of uh, group, so it's Microsoft dot graph dot group. Destination should be oh, that's right. destination member all right so this is the source so the source is the user group can that be the case group I'm a bit confused Interesting. Maybe let's start over here. So, four member, four groups, right? which is add transform map from convert using I remember a value converter what is a value converter what is this one So it's source, destination, and destination member. So you want to go from, from source, user. To 
to application user right to destination member which is a new rule of group Okay, so this return application okay, music group. Um, well, I actually want to give. I think the quickest will be just to create a tuple here. Because I can inject our mapper. I guess in 
here. And then pass in this uh, result. I suppose. Let's run it and see what happens. Okay, so obviously we have a problem there. Let's keep that there. And see. Anyway. That kind of worked. Right, so pencil pusher and all that kind of things are there. I want to give it a value. way of doing this is uh, into one let's just see what they say here
Und jetzt gibt er von. Well, I think we left with um, user with group. There's a new tuple. Uh, and this should be Microsoft Graph user and Microsoft Graph. Definitely not readable. Of 
user and Microsoft Golf Group. That goes there, and then this is application user. This goes out like that. Okay, so that works. First need to four member member display name. No wait a minute. This four member ID. Configuration should be map from source item one dot ID. Um, I think do the same for other one. Just go back to the other question I had, yeah, because I need to assign an application to this thing now. How would that work? here needs to be registered.
So accounts only in this directory only. Accounts in any organizational directory. Use this option if your target audience is internal to your organization. All users with work account can apply. This includes Google listeners that use Office 365. Okay, wait a minute. Let's add Okay, so now we invite this user in. Um, so let's go, what was the other one called? The other awesome job code. is called John Doe. This was John Doe, right? Okay, so blah blah blah. You can also maybe make him a pencil pusher. That's fine. Invite here. Really? Okay. Skip for now. And a pencil pusher. Okay, fine. Um, yes, okay. Now if I sign in, that's John Doe. John Doe at 
Is that gold? This one. Okay, I need. Okay. I know I broke the application. Stop it. Okay, admin. I need some admin something here. How do I give permissions now? Okay, wait a minute. I'm thinking I'm a bit confused here because John Doe is a guest. The sound rolls. I 
I see. Directly assigned. Okay, so let's add job card. Oh, where do I? I have no what I, no idea what I'm doing yet. Permission to guest Azure AD. applications. Groups are not available for assignment due to active directory plan level. My gosh. Okay.
if we say John Doe and Joe Soap. Okay, I felt. And Joe Soap is already. Okay. So now. to access resources in your organization that only admin can grant. Okay, so do I need to... Go to Active Directory here and Enterprise Applications. Okay, let's just sign in. Okay, now this will work. It will break again. approval. No, something is not um
Okay, so C. Let's do this again because I think something is not really. You know, we need to kind of rethink the way we need to log in here. Okay, maybe it's in here. Yeah. Job. No. Okay. Maybe it should be application level permissions. understand what it means.
Mm, okay. Okay. Made that change and see if that works. Don't think it will. User can consent apps to access that data in the PR. User can admin. Users can request admin consent to unable to consent to. Right. Users can consent to apps accessing company data on their behalf. Questions will it now work?
I have to figure out how this works. Okay, so maybe... Ok, 
Okay. I tell you what, I will take this offline and um, see where, because it's a bit late and um, I think this needs some investigation because what we have here is we have uh, multiple, multiple tenants uh, sharing one application. I do not want an application to be created in each tenant. We want one application to share users. So I think before we move on any sense, we need to figure out what is the best way, the best practice to do that. So, um, so yeah, like always, thank you so much guys to um, for, for viewing. I'm not gonna raid anyone now because it's kind of uh, past my bedtime. I will see you guys um, during this week, maybe tomorrow, maybe, maybe, um, maybe Wednesday or
Thursday. We, we will see. Grim Zunuk, hello, hello, hello. Uh, thank you for stopping by. Unfortunately, I'm uh, going offline now, but hey, thank you for, uh, for stopping by and say hello. Crimson, there we go, Crimson. Yeah, um, but do follow me. Um, the button over here, just uh, click there, and the next time I'm live, uh, it's a bit erratic, you'll get a notification, and then you will... Um, you will know when I'm online, so then you can join in the fun. Unfortunately, I need to go now because of time. Um, I want to thank all of you folks out there and uh, speak to you soon. Thanks for hanging out, man. Cheers.